Ben here from Structured Parametrics. I'm going to do a quick demo of structural analysis within Grasshopper for Rhino using Karamba. Obviously, you can pair this with making this truss parametric. However, for this quick demo, I've just made it up of a series of 2D lines, which I've just drawn in Rhino. So to start off with, I've got to build a model with the Karamba module. The main part of that is assemble model. So if I drag that in there, now it needs a number of inputs. We don't have to provide everything, but to start off with, it needs a series of points. So I'm just going to input these points. I've just grabbed all those points there in that node. Then I'm going to grab all of the beams or the lines which will become beams. For that I'm going to use curve and I'll set multiple curves. So now I've got the points and the curves. Points, curves. Now the next thing is so it wants to know what the points are. It wants to know what the elements are. You can't just put it in as just pure lines. You've got to make an element. And to do that, a simple way to do it in this example is line to element. Line to beam, sorry. And this just does take lines. So if I turn those lines into elements via that node, I can put that into the model. And already it's got enough information to make a basic model of nodes connected to elements. However, we need a little bit more to run some analysis, for example, supports. So for this example, I'm just going to use this point and this point as the supports of the truss. So again, I'm just going to add a point element. and set those points. So now that is those two supports I'm going to put. Uh, now, again, you have to make these into supports, which is another model module. Whoops, not that one. That's the type. It's this one here. So this can just take points and turns them into supports. And I want these, oops, I want the supports. Just for this example, I'm just going to lock everything in all axes, in, including rotation. But obviously, you can change that however you want. Put that into supports. Now I'm going to add a load. That's another quick module. I'm going to add some line loads here. Now it takes a vector and a load case. The load case I'll just leave as zero as default. Obviously you can change all this later. Put that load in there. Now the vector, I'm just going to make a unit vector in the z direction, so down which is that vector there. Now I'm going to multiply that just to make it um, a bit bigger, not just one uh, kilonewton per meter. I will just multiply it by 50. So I'll just set up a panel here. I'll make that 50. So that could be 50 kilonewtons per meter or, oops, any equivalent. So that's a vector 
Oh, and I'll make it minus 50 as well, so it's down the page, or down the, um, in, in the direction of gravity. So minus 50 vector, put that into there. So now our assembly has a, it has its points and elements, which is a model, it has its supports, and it has some loads. Now, another thing it's going to need is cross sections to use and material to use. So now I need to select a section. I'm going to use the cross section selection tool. This is one tool you can use, however, there is several others. Um, this one relies on you knowing the name of the section, which I do know. But if you use one of the other methods, there's ones that can choose from a list of sections and that sort of stuff, which is probably a bit easier. But this is just really quick. Oops, I've got it wrong there. Okay, that's a cross section. I'll put a cross section in there. And lastly, a material. So if I move these up, I'll use the material selector. And I already know the name of the material I'm going to use which is, well, it's just S235 uh, steel. Um, I put the name in here, but anything after the hash is a comment. That's my material. So now we have a complete structural assembly model and I can put that into analysis. So if I just put that into the model type, I can also get an analysis running. And I'll put a model into it. It's already run the analysis. Now to get results, the easiest way is the model view. And I put my model in there, which has been analysed already. And you can see it defaults to putting out a deflected shape. Now, some of these things we can play with, for example, the magnitude straight off. We can improve the loads, um, the reactions, etc. You'll see the symbols have the degrees of freedom on the react on the supports. You can change colours and tags and all that sort of stuff. Now the other thing we can do is get a 3D view of these results with the beam view component. So again, I can put the model into that, and you can see straight away it's made a 3D render of that model. Um, now you can also color the results. So I'm going to color stress. You can see which sections are in tension and which are in compression. Now I can combine this with the deflected shape by just, instead of taking the original model, take the deflected model and putting it into the beam view component. And now I've got combined deflection and axial force. So you can see where the forces are happening in relation to the deflection. Also got utilization, etc. So yeah, that's a really quick rundown of how to quickly draw up a bunch of lines and points, put it into a model, 
structural model, analyze and see some results come out pretty quickly. Hope you all liked it, leave a like if you did and I'll see you in the next video.